Okay, welcome everyone. Um, goals for today is that I can solve one-dimensional net force problems. Uh, so the agenda for today, you're going to take notes on net force. Uh, you're going to follow along with the one-dimensional net force example problems. And then you're going to complete the one-dimensional net force practice problems on your own. Um, so, uh, what is a dimension? Uh, a dimension is a direction in which an object can travel. Um, so, an object traveling in one dimension can move forward and back, it could move up or down, or it could move left and right. Right. So, it, but only one of those at a time. So, either just moving forward and back, just up and down, just left or right. Um, and so today we're going to be dealing with objects um, that have forces acting on them in one direction. Um, but that being said, forces could act in two or even three dimensions on an object. So let's just talk quickly about what that would look like. Eventually we're going to be solving problems for objects moving in two dimensions. So objects moving in two dimensions can move forward and back and up or down at the same time. Right, so essentially this object would be moving diagonally or at an angle. Right, It could be moving forward and back or left and right at the same time. Or it could be moving up and down and left and right at the same time. So if you kind of think about that. An object moving in three dimensions can move forward and back and up and down and left and right at the same time. So today we're going to be studying the motion of objects that move in one dimension. To do that, we need to determine the net force acting upon each object that we are studying. Uh, the net force is the sum of all the forces acting on an object. And so this can be expressed in the following, with the following equation. Net force equals, this, this symbol here is called a sigma. It's a Greek letter, it's a capital sigma, sigma F sub N. So what does that mean? Sigma means I'm gonna add up everything that comes after it. And then this FN is just a symbol, um, meaning all the different kinds of forces. So net force is gonna be force one plus force two plus force three plus dot, 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 right? So all the, all the different forces acting on an object added together. Um, forces acting in the same direction will add. Forces acting in the opposite direction will subtract. Right? Um, so, um, like for example, if you're thinking about an object and you've got one force acting up on the object and one force acting down, those forces will subtract. If you're thinking about an object that has two forces acting to the right, then those forces will add. Because right? they're both going in the same direction. And then we are also going to be using Newton's second law today. Um, so remember the force triangle, that's F, M, and A, and we get these three equations out of the force triangle. Okay. So let's go through a couple examples. A coffee cup is resting on a table. Gravity is pulling the cup downwards with the force of 3.5 Newtons. The normal force from the table is pushing up on the cup with 3.5 Newtons. Draw a force diagram on the cup, then calculate the net force acting on the cup. So here's my force diagram. Just kind of drew a box around the cup, put a dot at the center. We've got gravity is pulling down with 3.5 newtons of force. The normal force is pushing up with 3.5 newtons of force. Okay, so then I'm going to use my equation. Net force equals the sum of all forces. Right, so net force is going to equal force 1 plus force 2 in this case. Force one is the normal force, right? Uh, that's going up. Force two is gonna be the force of gravity, and that's pushing down. So I noted that by putting an N next to this force and a G next to this force. So the net force, we know that our force going up is 3.5 Newtons. Our force going down is also 3.5 Newtons, but because it's in the opposite direction, I made it negative. You could also write it like this, 3.5 Newtons minus 3.5 Newtons. And so my net force is going to be zero Newtons. 
I could have also calculated this with this formula, F equals MA. So when we're dealing with this, the force from the force triangle, that force is net force. So it's, it's the same as kind of like what we calculated up above. Our net force is going to equal mass times acceleration. Well, we know that the cup is resting on the table, so our acceleration is going to be zero meters per second per second. So even though we don't know the mass of the cup, we know that the net force is going to be zero because it was at rest. Um, so that's a, that's a different way we could have arrived at the same answer. Okay. Let's do another example. A baby is pushing a car forwards at a constant velocity of three meters per second. The baby is pushing the car with 10 newtons of force. Draw a force diagram on the car. What is the force of friction acting on the car? So we're going to draw a force diagram on the car, draw a box around it with a dot at the center. We know that the baby is pushing it forward with 10 newtons of force. So we're going to say that the applied force is 10 newtons. We know that there's a force of friction because I ask about it, right? What is the force of friction? So that's going to be opposite of the direction that the baby is pushing the car. We don't know how big it is yet. We're going to figure that out. There's also going to be a force of gravity. We can't know that without knowing the mass of the car, so we won't actually figure what that is in this problem. We also know that there's a normal force. And again, we're not going to actually determine that in this problem, but we'll, it's good to label them on your force diagram. Um, remember that F equals M times A, so we're going to use this to calculate the net force. Um, we know that the car is being pushed with constant velocity. That means that it's not accelerating. That means that um, the acceleration is zero. So we, even though we don't know the mass of the car, we can figure out the net force. That's going to be zero newtons. So now we're going to use our sigma equation. Force equals... Uh, Sigma Fn, force equals force 1 plus force 2. So this, this force over here is the net force. We know that our net force is 0 newtons. Sorry, before we do that, we should change these forces. So force 1, we'll say, is the applied force. That's going to the left. Force 2, we'll say, is the force of friction. So I labeled an A for the applied force and F for the force of friction. Um, we know that the net force is zero newtons. Uh, we're not sure what the applied force is. Excuse me, we know that the applied force is 10 newtons. That um, was given in the problem up here. We don't know what the force of friction is. That's what we're going to be solving for. Um, so to solve this, we're going to subtract 10 newtons from both sides. And then we should get negative 10 newtons equals the force of friction. And so then we can label that on our force diagram, negative 10 newtons for the friction. Okay, example three, we have a 2 million and 30,000, oh, whoops, that's missing a zero. There should be another zero for this one here. Actually, I'm going to go. Okay, so a 2 million 30,000 kilogram rocket ship is accelerating upwards at a rate of 3.6 meters per second per second. Draw a force diagram on the rocket ship. Calculate the thrust of the rocket ship. So we're going to draw a box around the rocket ship. Um, we know that it's thrusting upwards, so we're going to label this force thrust. We know that gravity is also going to be pulling it downwards. Um, uh, we didn't draw a gravity arrow as long as the thrust arrow because we know that it's accelerating upwards, so the upwards force needs to be bigger than the downwards force. And we're going to calculate what all of those forces are right now. So we're going to start off with our uh, Newton's second law to calculate the net force. Force equals mass times acceleration. So we're going to put in the mass of the rocket ship times the acceleration. And we should get that it's um, uh, the net force on the object is 7,308,000. Okay. So then um, we'll write our uh, net force formula. Net force equals change or equals uh, the sum of all forces. So in this case, it'll be force one plus force two. We know that our 
force going up is the thrust and that our force going down is gravity. Um, and so we're going to determine what each of those are. Um, we know the net force. In the end, we're trying to solve for thrust. We can't do that until we figure out the force of gravity first. So I'm going to write that formula over here. Force of gravity equals m times g. So that's really the same as this formula right here. F equals m times a. It's just in this case, the acceleration is going to be the acceleration due to gravity. Um, so we're going to plug in for the mass. And then remember that g is 9.8. And that's always going to be the case on Earth. Um, so we're going to take the mass times 9.8. And that will get us that the force of gravity is 19,894,000. Okay, and so then with that information, we can plug that in for f of g. And we know that our net force is uh, 7,308,000. So we'll plug that in for the net force. Oh, you can write this uh, force of gravity uh, below the gravity on the um, force diagram. And so then we'll plug in 7,308,000 for the force. We're going to plug in 19,894,000 for the force of gravity. Note that I made it negative, and that's because gravity is going down, right? Thrust is going up, so that's going to be positive. Um, we'll calculate for that now. We'll do that by adding 19,894,000 to both sides. And that should leave us with a... Um, a thrusting force of uh, 27,202,000. And so we should label that on our force diagram underneath the thrust, 27,202,000 newtons. Okay, and so then we've got four practice problems. One where a child's pulling a sled. This one should be pretty straightforward. Um, one where two football players are uh, pushing against each other. Um, we're going to have one where two teams of children are playing tug of war. And then um, one where a, a parachuter is jumping out of an airplane. Now, for this one, when you draw the force diagram, I said that you can ignore gravity for this problem. So when you draw the force diagram for problem three, don't worry about the upwards or downwards forces. Just, just worry about left or right. Okay? Um, and then similarly with problem two, I ask you to calculate two different things. So give those both a try. This one's maybe a little bit of a challenge problem because I had you do one thing in there that I didn't go over in the notes. Uh, but give it a shot and let me know if you have any questions.